I call the meeting to order at 6.04 p.m. And due to the hybrid format of today's meeting, I'd like to start by providing some guidelines. And this is a reminder that the meeting is being recorded and that we have live Spanish interpretation happening in the background. We have participants attending in person and others who may be attending by computer or by phone. For all meeting attendees, please speak clearly and pause frequently. State your name each time before speaking. If applicable, mute your microphone when not speaking. If having technical issues, try joining the meeting using a different device like a smartphone or tablet or use the call in information in the meeting invite to call into the meeting. And now we will go into attendance. And Monica, do we have any excused absences? Uh, we have Helen uh, who is excused. Uh, uh, she has an excused absence for tonight. She's unable to attend. Uh, and uh, I know Christina was planning to join, but I don't see her yet on the screen. She was planning to join virtually and that's it. I don't see yet Lorna here. Other than that, we do have quorum and uh, uh, we also have for the first time attending our uh, youth representative, Nima Kali is with us tonight for the first time for members. Oh, welcome Nima. Mm -hmm. um, so I think as we do roll call, maybe let's take a moment to introduce ourselves um, really quickly. So uh, Nima can have a chance to meet us virtually. Um, so let's see, Monica, are you able to? Sure, yes. Lucrecia yes. Okay, yes, I'm so sorry. I, I, I will be more present right now. Um, my name is Lucrecia Choto Nima, and I uh, serve as a general board member. I do have voting rights. Um, I have lived in Issaquah for almost five years this coming summer, and I, I have two teenage uh, children, young adults, that I mother. And that's about it. And for my words, would you like to go around the room? So sure. that's that's that. Okay. Uh, my name is Tony Curry. Uh, I am the co-chair of the equity board, uh, co-chairing at Pretty uh, Leadership. Um, let's see, I've lived in Issaquah for just about, I want to say seven to eight years. Um, and I'm just happy to be here, to be a part of our community, to be a part of uh, where we're taking equity. Hi, I'm Karthik, um, one of the new board members just started last month. Uh, yeah, pleasure and privilege to be part of this group. Uh, less than a year, a Sequoia resident um, came, came to the Sequoia in July 2022. Welcome. Thank you. And board members and Karthik, it's, it feels very awkward, so I understand if you don't want to do it, but the video and the microphone are actually in this hour. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> so if you want people on the screen to see your face, look into the owl. Oh, yeah. you are. <laughs> I guess we have the screen on the owl as well. <laughs> it is awkward. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's good to know. Hi, Nima Ray Manahan, uh, board member since the onset. I've lived in Issaquah, it'll be three years in August. Husband and I moved out here from Seattle. We have a teenage daughter. She's 16, sophomore at Supply High School. And um, first of all, thank you for being part of our group. We've been needing a team. A team representative is critical to our progress. So thank you for being part of us. Hi, Neva. I'm, my name is Kelly Munn, and I am an alternate. This is my second term as an, as an alternate for the Equity Board. And I have three kids. I've lived in Issaquah for four years, but in Sammamish for 28 years before that. So welcome. We're excited to have you on board. And Lorna, yes. Hi, Nima. Nima my is name is our representative. Hi, Nima. My name is Lorna Gilmore. And I have been a 23-year resident of the Issaquah area. I am a teacher. And now I, I still work in the East Coast School District. And I have two children and live in school. And hi, Nima, I'm Monica Negrida. You know me. We've been uh, meeting and chatting. I'm the staff liaison uh, to the equity board. And hi, Nima, I'm Preeti Modi Pian. Um, as of last month, the board chair of the equity board. So this is the first official meeting that I'm sharing. So have patience with me. And I'm taking over from. Uh, Shay, who's on um, 
the Zoom with us. Um, and so I've been in Issaquah for about 11 years now, and I have two teenagers at Issaquah High. Welcome. All right. Hi, Nima. Um, my name is Shay. Um, as Preeti mentioned, I am the former Issaquah Equity Board Chair. Um, however, I'm going out on maternity leave, and she graciously accepted our nomination for the spot. Um, but uh, I have been in Issaquah for almost five years now, and um, I have two kids in the Issaquah School District. So uh, my daughter goes to Gibson Eck, and my son will be going to Issaquah Middle next year. Um, so we are still very excited about being here. Yes, Nima. <laughs> Um, hello, my name's uh, Nima. This is obviously my first uh, meeting here. Um, I've lived in Issaquah for, I think now, seven years. Um, so I'm glad to be part of this, like, opportunity to be part of this uh, group. Um, I'm currently in running a uh, Running Start program at Bellevue College, um, but I attend Issaquah High School. Um, and I'm in senior, so yeah, that's it. And Christina, we're doing a quick roll call and introduction to our youth uh, board member, Nima, who's on the um, Zoom meeting with you. So if you could just introduce yourself to Nima. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Christina Bonse. I'm living here since 2019. And I have two kids in the district. Um, well, I'm happy to be here. And welcome, Nima. Okay. okay, so now we're moving on to public comments. And so public comments, can you tell I'm reading off the script here that Monica graciously yeah. provides? <laughs> um, so public comments are an important part of the public process, and we take them seriously and factor them into decisions we make. And here we have one uh, resident making public comment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Zani, we have Connie. Yeah. And then in addition, while Connie comes, please join us, Connie. Um, I know we also have uh, another committee member, Lindsay Pinkston from uh, the Highlands Council, is here on the screen. Um, I checked in with Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay, earlier today. Um, I know you mentioned that you're not interested in making a public comment, but just checking back with you if you're interested, Daphne, you are welcome to make a public comment after Connie. But if not, we love to have you here no matter what. Thank you. All right, so I'm Connie Marsh. I have I live on Squawk. I have spoken here before to some of you, but um, I've been in Issaquah for coming up on 30 years. Owned a small business for 25 of those years. Rents went up, now I sell online. Oh, it's so much better. But anyway, so I've gotten to see the transition that I don't know that anybody else has gotten to see, so I wanted to share a smidge of that, right? When I moved here, it was like blankety white, all white. And as a matter of fact, the history of Issaquah was so white, except for when we killed off the Native Americans and the Chinese and the black people that came over on the train, we just killed off each other because of religion. We had the KKK and they went after the Catholics because it seems like humanity needs to hate somebody, even if they are their friends and neighbors. It's anyway, I don't understand it. But then boom, 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 we come forward, 60s, 70s, 80s, teeny wee little town, growth management act, we have to grow. And what we ended up with was the Issaquah Highlands urban village taking the place of high end housing. And it was gonna be dense and walkable and all of this. And it soon became clear that, and this was a bunch of super wealthy white guys, Weyerhaeuser and, and all of this, creating this new form of living for Issaquah. This was going to break, totally break the concept of the all white Issaquah. And I thought that was really ironic. And I said that to the leaders at the time. I said, you know, you're getting something really awesome now that you could never have done any other way, but they were just doing it for money. 
right? They had no concept they were creating a social shift. And so that continued on with some affordable housing. And then we had Talus with the same thing happening because this was the first time ever that affordable housing was required in development in Issaquah. And so this is the start of change in Issaquah. And I have to say to Issaquah's credit, I don't really perceive that most people cared at all. They cared more about the trees being taken down than they cared about different people coming into the community. As a matter of fact, it was it's more interesting. You got more going on. You have different cultures and more to celebrate, right? So um, I, I come to this moment with that little history and I read your agenda and I become confused because there's words that I keep seeing underserved, marginalized, bias as compared to racial bias, which I see a little bit further on. And so, okay, I have this conversation with my white husband who is clearly privileged and has no excuse for anything, right? Me, I'm female. Am I, am I privileged and marginalized? That's how I feel, but not because I'm female, just because often in my government interactions, I am marginalized because they don't really like what I have to say. And I came to this board not too long ago, and we talked about the community, the, the toolkit, the community toolkit, and you all asked for that toolkit to come back to you. It never did. It spat out to council for their approval as if that conversation never happened. And so I felt marginalized. And I felt that you all were marginalized because your thoughts and care disappeared into the ether. And so for me, um, I'm not sure that this language resonates with me. Um, I, my mother lives in Bellevue. We go to Crossroads, we go to Factoria. Mom is the only white person over the age of 90 anywhere, right? She is treated like gold. I swear that woman gets so much privilege, except for when it comes to the fact that she needs to be able to use a computer and they sometimes don't have a role in it, right? But people treat her like old. Me, I'm invisible, which I think is fascinating. But Issaquah is somewhere in between. We don't yet have the uh, incredible I'm going, to, I'm going to use the word ethnic because I don't want to know what to call this multitude of varying people that that part of Bellevue does. It's astounding. And that is only in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the future of Issaquah, I'm not sure that this is the language that I want to base it on. Bellevue wasn't using this language to get to where it was. And this seems, now, maybe it's, it's me because I'm obviously privileged though marginalized. I don't know if I'm underserved, so I don't know what it means. So there is my story and there are my concerns. And I thought I was brave today to come and say, you know what, I don't get it, you guys. I, I don't get it. And it feels like I could be pummeled for somehow being bad, having that confusion. But because I don't mind being marginalized, I'm here doing it again. And then if you read the community survey that just came out, um, that you should have gotten. It does have some information on what certain community members feel about how accepted they are within the community. And I thought it was sort of interesting information. I don't know if it's true in reality or they just, you know, so I thought it would be a good conversation for you all. That's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Connie, for your courage in coming here today. And, yeah. um, I think your point is noted on how we use, I got to face the mic, yes. but on how we use language and maybe starting to uh, fine tune and sharpen up how we uh, talk about different groups. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. I, saw, I don't see anyone else online or in public. Online, you also have the interpreters, you see other names online. Okay, so then are we ready to move on to the approval of minutes? Okay, so, so yes. So it's Kelly speaking. Um, 
So I've attended a lot of different board meetings for many, many years. And one of the things that I found very disconcerting for myself was uh, giving public input and then the board doesn't talk about it. I would like us to talk about it. I know it blows our agenda out. Um, and I thank you so much for bringing it up, um, Kelly. Um, I was told that you as a board, this is not you. I think that I'm not sure what rules or regulations there are, but I'm told that you just accept public comments and you can follow up later. But if you as a board decide, I think you can change your rules to where, but I don't need permission from city clerks to see what can or can you not do. But I do understand it is a struggle. You would want to not only acknowledge the public comment, but talk about it and, and try to solve it. So. Um, if you would like, um, between now and next meeting, I would like to reach out to see where do we stay within guidelines and what can you do? And if you need to change your regular rules and regulations, then you can do that. Um, so. I'll say yes, this is mm -hmm. Kelly. And I and can we put it on the agenda for next month? Yes, yes. Thank you. Kelly. All of you are okay with that, absolutely. Yes. I agree. Um, and if I may ask, kind of, would you be willing to come back for our next so that we may be able to engage with you. If I, if, if, if yes, if I can, okay. there's no guarantee. Well, I probably can't, I have no right. I mean, even, <laughs> <laughs> even virtually will be okay, but yeah. having your presence yeah. here would be very helpful. Okay, so we will have hopefully a very engaging agenda topic next month to talk about how we use words like marginalized and uh, underserved and things like that. Okay. So now moving us on to the approval of minutes. Um, I'd like to, so we have two sets of minutes on our agenda because we had uh, two meetings fairly close together. And so um, if you are comfortable with that, we can take a couple of minutes to do a quick review of the minutes, and then I will ask for uh, a decision to approve. Monica, is there not one for the main minutes? I only see the April minutes. Yeah, last time we see it in here. Oh, okay. Oh, it's after the Spanish section? Yes. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, so you should have the April minutes in English, April minutes in Spanish, then May minutes in English, and May minutes in Spanish. Thank you. Got it. Okay, sorry. I thought it was like English and then Spanish. I didn't realize it was yeah. back and forth. Okay, got it. Sorry, thank you. No, that's your welcome. Oh, wrong button. Trying to meet my watch. Things so far split up. Um, let's see. <coughs> Does anyone uh, would anyone like to make a motion to approve the April minutes? Sure. I have a motion to approve April's minutes. Okay. I second. And we have a second. Uh, let's see. Am I supposed to see if there's any? Does anyone have any edits to suggest? Yeah. Okay. So I think that we approved the April minutes. And then, uh, do we have a motion to approve the main minutes? I actually have a question. Sorry, how does it work, Monica? Do we have questions before we, we approve? So what you can do, uh, very good question. So what you can do, you can have a motion to approve second, and then you have discussion before you approve them. Does that make sense? Right, but if we would like to change something. Yes, you still, you you approve, so you make a motion to approve the minutes, you second it, you discuss, you make edits, and then at the end you vote either to approve the minutes as proposed or it. with edits. Got it. 
Thank you, Melinda. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I know that rule. I just said it. It's very, it's just a little, it's just a little counterintuitive for me, right? To like yes. approve something and then disapprove it. I don't know. <laughs> Moving on. So, so I have a motion to approve. Me. Anyone second? I'll second. You have a second? Okay, so now uh, let's see. Lucretia, you yeah. I have a question. Um, so if you all recall, the mayor made a proposal to revisit the way that we handle the attendance, virtual, hybrid, et cetera. And then I said that I would like for us to actually consider the way that we run our board to be presented to other boards to see if they would change their theirs to actually mimic ours. Okay. So to, for us to serve as a model. And I don't see that anywhere in the minutes. And I just don't want that to, to, not to be lost. Okay. Like if I were to, you know, drop that or something, like okay. there would be no record of that. So you would like to have reflected in the minutes um, under the virtual attendance policy. Correct. That you, Lucrecia, you propose that. Um, <clears throat> that the way that we run our board Mm -hmm. be considered for the way that other boards run their meetings without. And that's the virtual meetings, right? That the policy on virtual meetings Correct. be considered by other boards. Correct. Right. right. Because I do believe that it is a way to be more inclusive of a wider variety of people. Mm -hmm. So, um, Here's the edit that I'm writing. So, um, member, board member Lucrecia Chola proposed that the policy on virtual meetings proposed by the equity board be considered by all other boards and commissions. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good as an edit for everyone else? Yes. Does anyone else have any edits to propose? I just had a clarifying question. Um, it's actually about your last name. I see it in three different forms. Um, <laughs> so, on, on the main minutes, it's got MODY dash pan, and then on the second page, it's MODE dash pan. And Sorry, pretty. Your tag says MODEY dash pan. So, oh, with oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, the side I see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> so I'm just curious which one's the right one. <laughs> MOD white. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm hearing okay, so we have two sets of edits. One is the edit to the virtual policy, and the other one is the edits to appropriately spell my last name. All you have to do is do a find Monica on yeah. the document and then replace so that it the machine will look for it as opposed to you. Yeah. Okay, so I think with the noted Thank edit, you, Carpet. Yeah. And I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> with the noted edits, um, we will proceed to consider the edits minutes approved with the edits presented. All right. Thank you. We cleared that item off the agenda at all. Okay, so now moving us on to the next topic is, uh, so the first uh, substantive agenda topic for today is the equity, implementing, equity framework implementation updates and next steps. All right, we have Stephanie and Dale here. Okay. We'll I notice you always seem to have the shake. Oh, I keep wondering why. Oh, so 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 I guess I forget to talk here too. <laughs> and it, I agree, it's kind of a little bit awkward, right? Talking well, to the owl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I just want to thank all of you for having me back. I wanted to say um, 
First and foremost, um, I heard you uh, at the April meeting, um, the feedback that you gave uh, around the city's efforts to advance internally, um, the equity framework. We had a good, robust discussion there. Um, two of my biggest takeaways um, you know, were one that I heard you, but then two, um, that you wanted to really partner um, with us in how we advance that conversation if we were struggling to do so. Um, and maybe just a little bit of just first first thoughts of, our, you know, some analysis paralysis going on internally that, you know, you could help us work through. Um, ironically, uh, in just right after that meeting, um, we have quarterly or a couple times a year, uh, what we call SLT senior leadership team and direct reports meetings. Um, it's an opportunity, you know, the senior leadership team made up of the department directors and a few extra individuals get together um, every Tuesday, but then that bigger group of managers throughout the city that the, the direct reports of the SLT get together as the core manager group and talk about uh, various things going on in the city. And so um, I went to city administrator Bob Kowitz and gave some of the feedback from the meeting that occurred. And I said, I think we have a prime opportunity here in a couple of weeks to really have a robust conversation about advancing the equity framework and some buy-in at that manager group to do that. Um, I, he said, great, let's do it. So uh, I asked him how much time I had and he said, you can have the whole agenda if you want, which um, <laughs> Uh, so that uh, became the formation of uh, a conversation slash training in one, if you will. Um, I reached out because we were on short time to get together, um, you know, uh, curriculum um, to actually first and foremost, Dale Marquis Crimp is a management analyst in the city. I think you've all met Dale at some point. I've, um, I've been to the board before, but virtually. Okay. This is my first time. Okay, great. Um, I reached out to Dale uh, for a couple of different reasons. Um, Dale has some really great facilitation skills. Um, she actually just in May uh, helped facilitate a, a, a capital improvement uh, tour with the city council. Um, she also, one of her main hats in the city is uh, data uh, and metric work um, for the city. And so when we advance such a conversation um, around equity and we're using a framework, um, you know, data is really important in that conversation. And so um, I called up Dale and said, hey, I have an idea and a plan. Why don't you partner um, with me on it? Um, that started to formulate um, uh, this, this SLT direct reports conversation. So the next thing um, I uh, reached out to Tony and Preeky saying, hey, last minute opportunity here, but I heard you, you know, would you like to come and uh, be a part of this, this conversation? And so uh, Preeky was able to move her schedule around a bit and attend um, three hour training, nine to noon um, on May 16th. And so um, largely what I wanna talk to you tonight um, is about um, that conversation and what occurred and then kind of next steps um, with a plan um, that we have moving forward, if that's okay with you. Okay, um, Monica, I haven't even had a chance to tell you, but I realized I don't have an invite to the meeting and I didn't give you advanced materials, but do you see an email from me? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I thought I would at least just preview, you know, we won't go through the whole training, but at least give you a visual of some of the contents of what we talked about at the senior leadership and direct reports meeting, um, at least the agenda, so you can see what the flow of that was. So Monica, that link um, to the uh, uh, PowerPoint is an email. Uh, that's the word doc. But I think that, that's what I had in the attachment. Let me check for it. It's in. It's in the actual body of the email. It's a um, a link. Okay, give me a moment. Then. We're gonna look at that too. But oh, I, I had Dale turn the heat down. Are you guys flushed or warm? We appreciate yes. it because yeah, it's, it's toasty good. though, right? Yeah. Which I told that we tell us that air yeah. conditioning uh, in the back, it's, uh, the fan is really, really loud, so it's going to be hard to hear one another. I think it's actually warmer outside. 
It is. I had been in Science City Hall and I came outside. Like, in here as it is out there. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. 79. Yeah. 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 So, so, so. Would you like me to open the window, though, just at least for the easy benefit? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dale. Stephanie, does this? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm going to just kind of quickly go through this, but, um, you know, one thing we did introductions around the room because not all the managers get together at the same time, right? We also have a space to uh, introduce Creepy. Um, we went, you know, really kind of, we started to talk about the conversation of what does equity mean to each of us? Because I think if we were to just each ask the question, we all have very differing ideas and answers about what that means. And we wanted to shape what it meant for us, you know, to guide that conversation as a whole. Um, we also shared, um, you know, kind of some conversation about the difference between equity versus equality. Um, and we, and um, actually, Monica, will you go out of uh, uh, presentation mode so we can kind of see the next slide? There we go. So, um, uh, I guess I, I guess I do want to see both at the same time. I'm so used to my double screen. Sorry. So, uh, sorry. So, um, if you go down just uh, a slide there, um, uh, we we gave this visual um, in equity versus equality. I think all of us have seen this at one one time or another. And actually, Preeti gave us some input to this um, as well. Um, we then uh, talk uh, if you go down the slide. Uh, wanted to talk about uh, marginalized groups, and this certainly isn't all of them, but uh, you know, a representation of what a marginalized group is. Um, we then had Dale give a portion of the presentation in the next two slides. Um, we wanted to talk about some of the, the demographic of Issaquah so that individuals even kind of, you know, many probably didn't haven't even seen some of this data, but we did that as a group. So Dale took us through uh, a few different slides on uh, data that would help contribute to the conversation as part of, you know, a, 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 Part of our why, right? Mm -hmm. um, Dale, any comments about data that you want to? I, I believe I'll be back soon for a larger data conversation with this group, so I won't I won't bel belabor that right now. But we, you'll notice there were three really basic categories, and I think also you'll notice I only talked. We only looked at 2010 to 2020, and we looked used census data. We know that's just one. Time period, you know, that's just one type of data. I could, or I could have gone back to 2000 and shown an even bigger change. Um, but really, what we, I feel like, supported our our leadership in doing was looking at these specific opportunities. So this is actually slide 11 that you were on, Monica. Um, taking some time, so we gave them time to just explore. We said, here's a taste, but now take 15 minutes and go look at some of this yourself, um, because if we're going to be making equitable policy and programs, we need to do the exploration on the front end to get a better sense of who, who, who is our community. That's great. Um, so we took some time and used just, again, just some other resources to support that conversation. Which actually moves us into the next slide, Monica, um, that we actually gave them that time um, to consider you know, these questions um, as a result of looking at that data. And then if you go down a slide, come back and share as a group um, what, what we thought, right? Or what everyone thought. Um, the next part, um, after a, a break, uh, you know, we talked just really kind of what is an equity framework? And uh, we also blended in, I think I shared here in the conversation about our, uh, our core values in the city, the salmon values, and how you know, this is a good representation of exactly what the framework is also uh, meant to embed into our organization, that we live by these things. And eventually we hope you know, we don't need this framework, but that our culture has changed, that um, we are just simply bringing these questions to the conversation, much like in the way that we, we do our salmon values uh, in the organization. And then, uh, you know, this is 
questions one through five of the 13, which um, are the next two slides, the 13 questions of the framework. And we actually uh, went through a case study as a group. And so um, we used the framework as a, as a, uh, a team and um, did a group exercise. There was approximately 25 to 30 of us there, just so you understand the group size as well. Um, we started to run out of time because we were really having some good conversation. We had intended to do, you know, uh, a case study together and then break out into teams and do a case study. Mm -hmm. We didn't, you know, get to that place that we were able to do that. Um, but we had some really good conversation going and um, I, I was I was so pleased to see that everyone was actually using the tool and working through it and didn't feel so so tough right you know that analysis paralysis piece. Um, I think you know then let's uh, go through these next few slides. Uh, Monica, because the sum of this, that actually, if you could go back up to that equity board one, um, those next slides were other case studies that we just didn't get to. They're still embedded into the PowerPoint. But what we what we started to uh, formulate is this idea that we would have every department break into groups and start to have a conversation about what program project policy uh, is happening already in their department and strategize as a team real quickly on identifying something and being able to come back to this board and talk about what that project or program or policy is and use the framework where Dale and I would help facilitate a conversation and then that each department um, and we happen to have uh, 12 of them. Uh, this only shows we have some divisions that make up um I, that shows nine i do realize that <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, so um so uh, that every department over the course of a year could come to you all and talk about um their project or program or policy and the use of the framework and what worked well or where they struggled struggled or how they could partner with you to advance the conversation um so, Monica, if you would be willing to pull up the Word document now. Don't totally close that, please, because I actually want to I want to come back around to kind of the last commitment piece that I want to share, too, um, with you all. Oh, when you have so many things. <laughs> this is why you need a computer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, after everyone had their time to go to break into their departments and have uh, small group conversations, um, they came back and we did an info share on something that they believe that is, you know, happening right now that they could bring back to the equity board and and share with you all. So this is the list of what we, uh, you know, preliminarily came up with police talked about the new body camera policy, public works, a water shutoff, parks, a recreation program, registration procedure that they need to work through, um, facilities, uh, uh, city hall space planning that is underway uh, in terms of uh, community input. Um, economic development, I believe, is actually already on the agenda for July in some fashion for mm -hmm. you um, uh, to talk about their strategic plan. Um, there's also uh, right now an independent salary commission that's looking at the salaries um, of the council members and uh, how um, how we could use the tool there. Uh, David Reedy uh, came to you once and talked about the sustainable purchasing policy, but uh, that is something I'd like to continue to um, have the conversation with you around. Uh, the municipal court uh, identified the therapeutic court grant uh, that they are working on. Finance um, uh, approach to community engagement related to the budget and uh, particularly utility billing process. 
Human Resources. Uh, uh, we are the staff liaison to the Civil Service Commission, um, and uh, I have identified that the civil service rules are a, a good place where we could use. Um, I, Kelly yeah. actually participated yeah. on a, a commander process with us recently, and so I think there's an opportunity there. Um, CPD, Community Planning and Development, um, they were going to identify and kind of take it down to something related to, you know, community info sharing and engagement. And then fire, fire's kind of a wild card because, you know, I mean, we can certainly have them come and we want to, um, you know, we wanted them to address something, you know, they are uh, contracted with the city. So they certainly, they were there and they were a part of the conversation. We have to, um, uh, we've, we felt like with that uh, facility space planning and the facilities assessment related to fire could be also a good topic area for discussion. We did tell every department, just because you put this down here doesn't mean that has to be the one thing, you know, and we hope that you don't just identify just one thing, that you're, wor you're, you're comfortable now using it more um, and that we're going to continue the conversation. But this was, you know, a commitment from the senior leadership team and the managers to identify projects and come back and work with you all and share with you what worked well, what didn't, and that we could partner together in a meaningful way. Um, so I'm going to pause there for a minute because Dale and Preethi, who, pre you know, certainly represents your board, um, anything that you'd like to offer as a part of, you know, what occurred there, um, I, you know, I think it would be valuable to hear. Um, sure. So this is Preethi. Um, I, I found the conversation and the training to be really helpful and especially like the, the data to set it up because it, it, it enabled folks to like grasp on some information as they started thinking through, even though the case study was very different. Um, I was impressed with some of the insights that they were just gathering from those three points of data on the census around language, uh, income, income race, race. Race. yeah. Like some of the obvious things folks started thinking about was opposing to start translating more of our materials and stuff like that. So it was really nice to see some like immediate kind of actions come to mind. And um, there was this like real concern around, well, we can't really answer all of the questions or, you know, so it's like maybe not all, uh, like all of those uh, programs are well suited for every question, but I think we tried to reiterate, it's okay, we can skip a question, you know, just keep going, and this is an opportunity to test out the tools so we can refine the tools, mm -hmm. so I think, uh, I hope that message was coming forth, but um, they needed to hear it a few times, but I appreciated their level of engagement. Yeah, this is, this is Dale, I'm not sure there's too much I would add. Um, I did share in the moment how excited I was to have that room full of people just looking at the data in the first place. Yeah. Um, I believe my words were I could die happy today, and then I was told, you know, be safe. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, I would reiterate what Ruthie just shared. I think there there was an immediate gut concern from a lot of staff members that they're going to get it wrong. Um, and that that was a worry that we're gonna we're gonna get these 13 if we don't we don't know the answer and so we can't use the tool and it's like well, that's the point the point is that you don't know the answer and now we got to figure out what the answer is or how how we would pursue finding the answer and so I think it was a really helpful first step um, and we're excited I think Stephanie and I are very excited for even if it's not the project program policy process they need there for each of these teams to come to this space and bring something and bring bring their wrestlings. Um, to you all, um, it, it, I, I mean, maybe hopefully more than once too. Yeah. To come for a consult on something that's in the works, and then to come back and be able to say, "And this is how it's going," or a question I always ask people, which is, "How do you know it's working?" Um, it's great to go through the 13 questions, but that's just around our design, not necessarily our implementation, and not necessarily if it's hitting the outcomes. So, something for us to think about for term So one pivot the conversation to kind of some questions back to you all but before I do Monica would you be willing to please pull up the PowerPoint again because yeah. one of the things that I wanted to share that we uh, kind of left everyone with that day that you know 
not only would Dale and I be coming back out to help facilitate some of these conversations and to help you, that it wasn't just a one and done and now you got to totally go figure it out on your own, but that we would help you. The equity board is here to help you. Um, but that next slide, uh, last one, I think, um, personal commitment. And so I realize this is small, uh, <laughs> sorry, um, but uh, we introduce, we've started introducing an employee growth and development plan. Um, we talk a lot about, you know, uh, being a city of growth and development, um, and some managers, uh, supervisors are really good about having those conversations with their staff. Others may not be. Some have things documented, some don't. And so from not just a recruitment standpoint, but also a retention standpoint, and then, you know, one's personal commitments to uh, their own growth and development. Oh, thank you. Um, we actually uh, introduced, there we go. We actually introduced uh, this employee growth and development plan back, uh, this form, back in March at an all city training um, uh, and at that training, we were talking about holistic wellness and eight dimensions of it and setting some personal SMART goals, um, but, and, and, and some short-term, medium-term, long-term. But one thing that was on it is, in particular, page two, um, I knew that, you know, we wanted uh, staff um, at all levels in the organization to make a personal commitment to advancing equity. So this got introduced in March, but we reiterated it at the, the meeting um, on May 16th um, for everyone to identify a SMART goal, you know, you know, related to their personal commitment on advancing equity. So we've got to do some follow up on this, but you know, it was just that that last little, OK, what's your personal commitment now? You know, um, it can't be the city administrator, the mayor or, you know, Stephanie from HR or Dale or others. But what what are you going to commit to doing that is that is a smart goal that's um, specific over over this biennium? Right. So so I want to share that. Um, thank you. You can take that down. Um, but where I'd like to. Uh, take the conversation next is one of the things that we talked about in closing is uh, staff said, okay, we commit to doing this and we we have a project here and we'll, we'll absolutely mm -hmm. come, but we'd like to know, you know, some parameters uh, around, you know, what the board would like to see when, when everybody comes, um, you know, you've seen, uh, some departments come and talk about things. Uh, everybody's probably had a little bit of a different style in, in that, whether they have presentation or it's conversation. And they were hoping for some kind of uniformity that, you know, their expectations, at least your expectations are known to them about what you'd like to see. Um, so that one isn't coming, you know, to take up the whole hour and and mm -hmm. bring presentation and somebody else comes to conversate and, and didn't hit the mark. So my question back to you all um, is what you would like us um, to, you know, tell these these departments and individuals that are going to come to you, what would be, you know, ideal for how we structure when they do come back to you? Um, I do want to say Monica and I had a conversation about, you know, you have a work plan, you know, and I've kind of thrown a wrench a little bit in the work plan, but not really. You're going to stick to your work plan, but my hope is that you all have a space to carve out each uh, you know, each meeting over the next year or so that you're seeing a department for that amount of time and you can stick to your regular work plan. So as we now that we've done this and we've done some, you know, um, identification, now we want to shape it so that when we do come back out to you, we meet your expectations about how you'd like that interaction to, to go. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. This is Ray. That was really amazing and interesting. So thank you for coming here and sharing that. And, and even my world data and everything, people don't have numbers in front of them. They don't trust you. Um, 
there was some, the word parameters stood out to me when you mm -hmm. said that. So there were two things on the word document. Um, you had goals there for each of these different teams, but there were no timeframes associated with them. Yeah. So how do we incorporate that into a plan that shows that we want to achieve this lofty goal in this time frame? So if, if maybe a quarterly report to the equity board as to what, what, what the layers are underneath those that are each in each one of those lines would be helpful yeah. because that's those are those are big goals. And I, what I would like to see, and I'm interested in the board comments on this, is the, maybe the sub bullets under that of how you operationalize these based on those groups and the time frame by which they expect to implement them. And the quarterly is, is challenging, maybe even you know, biannually or something, because I, like I said, those are pretty big goals that were really fascinating and kudos to them creating. Sure. Thank you. Um, Dale and I actually talked to the senior leadership team yesterday for kind of that conversation after um, one, two weeks ago to say, hey, we're coming back to the board tonight. This is everybody's, you know, commitment from two weeks ago. We're reaffirming this. And after this, we'd like you to start. Um, we're going to start building a calendar that is reasonable with um, some conversation with them. Um, so knowing what your next two months worth of agenda topics are and Dale and I having a little bit of space to be able to go out to those departments and really kind of structure something, we thought that we could probably start a conversation with a first group um, because you already have economic development uh, and uh, sustainability is also underway. Um, we thought we'd start it in September um, with police and possibly CPD, um, but we need to kind of have those in-between conversations about what's reasonable um, kind of in that way. So I hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, I see Shay has her hand up. We will go to Shay next. Hi, yes. Um, so when I was looking at this, um, much like Ray, I was very impressed, but um, when I thought about what I wanted to see when people came back to the equity board, my thoughts were um, I want them to introduce their SMART goal and explain some of the elements and significance of it. Um, because to some degree, um, some of the goals are really lofty and uh, why you chose that goal can kind of tell us how you decided how you were gonna get there. Um, and then we want, I, or I would want to know what the benefits of that SMART goal are um, because there is a possibility that that SMART goal, given the time they had, didn't necessarily meet the mark. And I know that they're not married to that particular idea. Um, so if it changes, I definitely want to know why it's changed and what made it significant. And then setting up some guidelines for describing or defining how they're going to not only meet the objectives of that goal, but also kind of determine how they're being successful. Um, metrics are really important. And if it's measurable, then that makes it a little bit easier for everyone to understand why you chose that goal and what you wanted to accomplish with it. Um, and sometimes that can be hard to do if your goal is too general. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to um, also suggest that maybe we have them give us some examples or case studies kind of showing how that SMART goal was successfully implemented. Um, because uh, that could not only be a good way to show us how they met that goal, but also an easy way to demonstrate how others can meet their goals. Stephanie and school members, may I jump in with, I think, what might be a clarification? Yeah. yeah. Shay, thank you so much for bringing that up. I think I, I, based on my recollection of, mm -hmm. of uh, the, the meeting a few weeks ago, I think the departments were asked to choose a work plan item that they have within their departments to, to use the equity framework on. So actually what you saw on the screen, it's not actually a SMART goal that they chose. It's a work plan item, something that's in their department uh, on their list of 
things that they need to accomplish either this year or next year that they chose to use the equity framework on, right? And so I agree, I think the SMART goal discussion was a commitment that Stephanie asked everybody to say, okay, you individually choose one goal for yourself that you would like to implement in, uh, and advance equity on. That's a little bit different than this, right? Stephanie, or is it? That, that, is, that is true, although I'm a little bit intrigued by Shay's comment because I do think that there could be a potential space that when we have a conversation about why that particular item was chosen, it could be maybe different than the ones personal yeah. individual mm -hmm. but as a team mm -hmm. you know i think we could maybe hit it a little bit um so i'm taking yeah. as a takeaway but thank you for the mm -hmm. clarification because that is true their you know their smart goal is related to them choosing something personally that they could do to further you know commit themselves to advancing mm -hmm. and it it may or may not be related to the project that right. they chose yes and, and still, I think, Shay, your comments are still valid in terms of, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. kind of like providing that background yeah. and why and whatnot. Absolutely. Thanks, I wonder. Yeah. Well, I have a, oh, oh sorry. I think Lorna has oh, sorry. a question. And then Carpet. I think okay, that's got it. Sorry. I love the fact that you have a conversation with that team and all the outcome. It does feel to me like it was a training. Mm -hmm. And it also feels like each one of the, the different, different departments coming to us and presenting and us having that conversation is still training. And so I think I'm having a disconnect as to our role as an equity board and what we are doing with each group coming in, because it doesn't feel like that is our initial role. I think uh, I thought our role was to look like identify different policies, projects, program on our own or have community members come and talk to us about concerns, and then we look into it and say, hey, what's going on, and then do follow-up, which sometimes we may or may not be good at. And so to keep that focus, because to me, a conversation like this is going to take at least an hour of each of our meetings, but we only had two hours, and I wonder how we can actually do what I originally thought we were going to do in this board versus what it feels like I'm going to be doing is hourly trainings each month with the city on how to better use this mm -hmm. equity policy. And so I'm wondering what happened to our trainer and if that person who we who was there to have those initial conversations, it seems like that person or that team would be the one to have those conversations because it feels like the group grew in having that conversation, which was very robust. It opened their eyes to different aspects. And so each team needs to now go about doing that. But to me, to have to wait for those 12 groups to come and wait over the course of the year to come and talk to us, it's a waste of their time. And what are they doing with the other projects, policies, mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. in the meantime? Right. So it, it this, this is very, this is not what I don't think we as a board have talked about doing for the past 12 months. I, thank you for that. I, I'm and I, I kind of invite some conversation too, if that's okay, because I, I don't want to, you know, come up with a plan that is not, you know, your vision for what you're doing here too. I will offer, I think that, you know, Dale and I can help a little bit with that so that you're not feeling like each month you're, you know, training per se and um, can be a resource there. But I, I, I thank you for that. Actually, or, don't, yeah, or you or can pause, yeah, you please, go ahead. I did, yeah, yeah. sorry, I know there's no. lots of questions, so I'll try, try to keep it brief. Um, yeah, I agree, this is very impressive and exciting, and this overlaps with several of the questions that have already been asked. I was curious about what how, how the different departments went about choosing their favorite project policy program that features on that list. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe a related question is, if we as a board had the opportunity to look at their list of work plan projects and then see if there's, you know, things that might fall into categories that could be simultaneously um, mm -hmm. looked at by, by, by us as the equity board and provide um, ways in which 
instead of looking at individual projects that are somewhat unrelated, be able to group them together or also maybe find the ones that are most suited for the equity framework or at least that are mature and ready for that sure. versus a choice that was made without our involvement. Sure. Um, that I want to speak to the first part, and then the second, you know, we, is a takeaway for us for sure. The how chosen, you know, we didn't we didn't give any rules. Um, you know, we said go have a conversation. You talk as a team, um, and then give us an idea. But so I, I don't know. Those were those would vary, um, depending upon you know that group conversation and how it morphed into getting this right. Um, and they only had. 10, 15 minutes um, to think of something, you know, um, that that they could, you know, make a declaration, you know, um, amongst mm -hmm. the others to say that he looks like this on the list. Yeah, I think it's kind of um, a mix of what has already been said. Um, I, I thank you for explaining how how that process was with like the 15 minutes go as a team come back. Because my question was more around, okay, so we get to see one of their goals, but it's the whole year, right? Like, they, there should be more. And so I was wondering, you know, like, can, can we see what other things they're working on, um, A? And then B, for me, my understanding about the framework is that the framework should really be the lens from which they should be seeing everything, mm -hmm. right? So it's not just like, I'm going to pick one project okay. and I'm going to apply the, this framework to it, but rather here's this framework and it's like a funnel where everything goes through that and each individual as well as teams, like concentric circles, individual team, department, city is using this framework to ensure that those questions are at the forefront for making decisions, making mm -hmm. policy, making uh, goals that they're they're working toward. So thank you for explaining how that one thing came up because I I was a little bit concerned about like because some of it just seemed really vague. Sure. Yeah, but I also want to support in what Lorna was saying um, with regards to having questions around the timing of it all and how we're gonna be able to carry out what we have identified as our own um, goals with regards to bringing in people to ask for our feedback. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I stole Lorna's comment from that conversation in April that we made sure that this isn't identify one thing and it's chequity. I, you know, we made sure, um, you know, to, to include that in the conversation that we also want to this to be everything and culture changing, um, but that we, we asked everybody to kind of start with identifying one that we could help you through mm -hmm. and not necessarily you know that somebody doesn't have to touch anything till 12 months out because you're this on you know this date that's not what we're trying to achieve right so um but that we would certainly identify something that we can help you with so that you can certainly start embedding this on your own and in your own um for all of your projects so so when i look at the um the personal improvement plan and i think about okay if all stars align let's say i'm gonna put myself out there and say if i'm working for the city stars are aligned i'm thinking wow equity is a great thing and i put that on my on my performance or my project improvement plan or my performance improvement plan and if i have to wait i'm managing a project and i'm ready to talk to the equity board but i have to wait three four months to do it I'm thinking tick, 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 tick. Mm -hmm. Like, why do I have to wait? Why do I have to wait? So thinking about it from that perspective, my hope is that a lot of people within the city who are planning projects, who are project managers, program managers, they're excited about equity, they want to implement it, they want to do something, they're, they just want to make it happen, make it work. It just would not work for me. Even if I was planning one project, it would not work for me to plan out a project and to have to wait two, three, four months to come and talk to the equity board. So I would want an intermediary, someone or so, Monica, Dale, someone, or we have a subcommittee or something like that so that I can 
you know, get on my project plan because it's always about like, you know, end day, you know, to get completed so that I can get it kicked off, ready to go. Um, has that been, did that possible, was, was there a possibility that kind of came up out of the meeting? Were there any thoughts into that process or? Not yet. Not not yet. Not that far yet. Um, we need to go back out to departments, right, and really what every single person identified and the project and facilitate with them. And you know, this is a big group and asking everybody. Right. So right. now First. it's more about going back out to the to the individuals and the small teams for that small group conversation or individual okay. conversation. So it did not work that way. Okay. But um, so, I'd say hear your point. I no, I think related, Tony, to your statement, I, I, I don't think this should be considered like a gate before they can implement, mm -hmm, right? right? So mm -hmm. I think um, they should be doing this, uh, utilizing the equity framework as it fits in mm -hmm. with their work plan sequencing is what I think. And so if they, they finish the, the analysis and they use what they found to inform how they move their work forward. They're, if their approach changes, I think that's great. And so when I think about what I would want to hear about it is probably, you know, like maybe these projects, policies, programs, whatever the end is, that is to 12 and whatever stage of implementation they're in to, to know what their experience using the framework was, mm -hmm. how it mm -hmm. influenced what they did, mm -hmm. and then depending on where they are, or maybe they come back, like how do they think their outcomes were more equitable mm -hmm. for having done this process? Mm -hmm. So I think some, something like that, and so uh, it could be various. So I think there's a learning that we can get from understanding how well the tool works for folks, which is that more of that training end, but I think the tools are perfect. So, yes. and I don't know who's on point for like who's gonna modify the equity framework. But so there's there's a, a place to kind of do that to improve that. But then there's also an understanding of how the process is going for folks. But then yeah, but ultimately I think as Dana said, it's like are we better off for our outcomes? Can I add a couple layers to the conversation here I think um, so two things you know we do have an internal equity committee that's apprised of uh, members from departments that you know this is not just Dale and I and this manager group and identifying a project actually tomorrow um, the equity committee is getting together and um, we're going to talk about this and ways that that whole committee can help um, and represent in the department the other piece to that is that we have an all city meeting tomorrow and I have a space on the agenda to talk about where we're at with equity and I'm going to talk about the framework. And so we started with the manager SLT group because, you know, for good reason um, that, you know, that culture change happens, you know, often it can go both ways, but often we need that senior leadership management buy-in in all of this. Um, we need the equity committee to be helping, and we also need the, everybody in the city, all city. So I want to mention that because this is not just that group and identified a project and check off, but if we're really going to move culture change, it's all of us at, at different, you know, spaces to do that. And so um, I want you to know that that is not just in a silo, what's happening with that group, but that we're making it, you know, all city and then um, really, you know, tasking our, our committee to help uh, as well. So that, for what that's worth, I think it's important um, that that's a piece of this too. Question, oh, did you need to go somewhere else? Yeah, I saw Ray had this. Oh, so I was oh, just, just checking. Very quick, yeah. because I thought one of the documents, there was a date on the questionnaire where I think there was a date of 2025 to get either the feedback in place. So I, I'm, I often question goals that don't have an end, uh, a, tar a target date mm -hmm. to complete. Mm -hmm. So if we keep it open-ended, it might extend it to a period of time that we don't accomplish it. So mm -hmm. if that questionnaire, I, th I thought I saw 2025 so that I could narrow yeah. down a strategy to a time frame. It, it's a, it was 23 and 24. Okay. Um, I, I hear your point though. Um, 
you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, you know, this is the first time anybody's even, you know, we're asking them to document any goals for any, you know, particular thing in a formalized way citywide that everyone has that. So the form and the goals and writing it down, um, where those are happening, you know, we don't have a universal way in which everyone identifies goals and uh, then has a benchmark for when to achieve those. So, you know, the introduction of that form was really broad and that we're going to be coming back out because another project that we're just even doing in the city is we manage performance a little different with a check-in model and not your traditional performance review and we're realizing it was a little too wild wild west you know <laughs> we do still believe that um you know there's nothing timely about an annual performance review mm -hmm. and in the spot feedback is very important and so you know we have this check-in and feedback model, mm -hmm. but we went from a, an entirely traditional performance review to nothing, and now we need to bring it back a little bit and, and set goals. So that introduction of that form was to kind of bring it back and introduce it for all things, and we, we added equity to it so that when you are talking about all of your goals, this should also be a part of your personal commitment to the conversation. So I hope that yeah. clarifies a little clarifies. bit. That form is very new to everybody. Um, so not something that we're used to seeing year after year um, to, to hit. Yeah. Well, in the interest of managing the yeah. agenda, the time on Thank the agenda, you. I think we probably have to totally No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Any last parting comments or questions for folks before we wind down? Yes, Kelly. Kelly, I just want to say I've been part of systems change three, two times, and um, you guys have it set out so clearly, right? I mean, I'm sure three, three years from now, you're going to say, no, it was a disaster. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do, right? Yeah. But from my perspective, who's gone through equity implementation in two systems, you guys... I, I, the idea that everybody has, the leadership is participating at the front end, mm -hmm. and the idea that the leadership is helping people set goals, and, it's, and that also staff in general has some say in how this goes, that doesn't win. So that makes me proud of the city. <laughs> Um, I want to respect time. I also hear, hear Lorna in terms of, you know, planning out your agendas for you in a way that you all maybe think doesn't work to uh, what you envision for this team. And so there's probably a space to need to have some further conversation there. Um, I, how and when we can probably figure that out a little bit. Um, regardless, Dale and I are at work internally to advance, yeah. you know, culture change. We're still going to meet with all these. Teams. Yeah, you we're still we're going to still do all that because that work yeah. needs to be, you know, carried forward no matter what. So um, know that we will continue to do that, and then um, you know, if there's a space and time that you identify and have a further conversation about um, how we how we parallel and cross, um, you know, I'll certainly look to Monica and Preeti and all of you um, for that direction. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the agenda next, Ray, is talking about, um, let's see, uh, Pride Month events. Yeah. And, and before, as Ray is gathering his notes and thoughts, I would like to just jump in to, to say a big, big shout out and a big, big thanks for single-handedly organizing the whole Pride Month event. I just cannot say thanks for all your work, Ray, so thank you so much. And I know we also have online our human services coordinator, Hannah Roberts. Yeah, I know yeah. that she has been the uh, low- uh, Hi, everyone. Uh, hey, Dale. Hey, Stephanie. Supporting with all those things for Pride Month, but thank you to both of you for all yes. your Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for supporting us, Monica. So just to light things up, there's so much going on in June. 
Did you ever look at the calendar? Oh, yes. And and graduation, and that's the big thing, right? Anybody who has kids who might be graduating in June is that mm -hmm. um, Father's Day. There's, uh, there's um, June, uh, June, June team is another right. thing we're preparing for from, from a DEI perspective. Several but, awareness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but so like today, June 7th, is Global Running Day and National <laughs> Chocolate Ice Cream Day and VCR Day. Who uses VCR? <laughs> <laughs> They're coming back. The youth are bringing them back. Oh, okay. they're, they're yes, they are. Is, yes, is it it's a thing back? now. They're like out hunting for VCRs and VHS. Like record players. Yes, that's right. Yeah, they they're bringing it back. So, um, Hannah, thank you for being here. I, I, I'm sorry, I keep looking at your face, but I should look at this because she's been helping us coordinate. So, um, I just want to share some highlights of this uh, event that we've been planning for. Um, happy Pride Month, everybody, by the way. It's a big event for the LGBTQ community. This whole month is just a, a way to celebrate. So on Thursday, June 22nd, from 6 to 7.30 p.m., um, we are going to have a virtual event. We're going to try to copy the same thing that we did last year, but I think we're maturing on how we did it last year versus how we did it this year because we have a little more time. To virtual. Try. Virtual. Oh, yes. Interesting. Okay. Yes. So you can log in online. The mayor was kind enough, and Monica and Hannah was kind enough. Were kind enough to put it in the last distribution email to show it. So you can you can look at that um, in your emails and see that there's an appointment. There's a, a link there that you can join the event. And I'm hoping everybody in our review board can, can join and listen in. So it's taken some time. Um, last year we had we had a good event last year, but I think just teeing up to this year we had a little bit more time to plan. So a couple things. Um, I will act as the facilitator, but we have some great leaders from across different organizations. Lambert House, there's a gentleman by the name of Brandon Knox. Lambert House, if you're not aware, there's an organization in Seattle that targets um, how to support the youth LGBTQ community. And so Lambert is a director there um, with involved in outreach. And the second gentleman, um, Jen Pride, yeah, his name is Mitch Hunter, so he serves the senior population of the LGBTQ community. So having those two and their perspectives joining the conversation is fantastic. And I have to pause, and um, we were challenged to identify what was really important to me in this discussion. We had it last year, but I don't think it was as, as robust as I'd like it to be, is to have, is listen to the voice of the youth in the LGBTQ community. And this year we have um, two, and we even have a backup, and thanks to your connection to Shannon, that's how I was able to get them. So okay. thank you, Lorna. Um, uh, and, and to next door at the garage, we have um, two students who are going to be joining us, Jackie Bean and Logan Burbank. And they head what is called SAGA, the Sexual and Gender, Gender Alliance Club at, at Issaquah High School. So they're going to be on the panel, too. So in addition to me hosting it, there's going to be four individuals there. So gentlemen from Jen Pride, a gentleman from Brent. Uh, from um, Lambert House and her two students from Mississippi High School. It was really important to get their perspectives on this. And so what we've been doing the past couple weeks is me formulating an agenda, getting their feedback on the content to really stimulate a, a robust conversation that will pique the interest of anybody who's online. Um, and if you think about what's going on with the LGBTQ community, it's 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 been a challenging year. Um, with all the things that are going on, with um, the aggressions that have been going on, with the bullying and and the, um, the shootings that have been happening um, with clubs. So I've incorporated that into the conversation, but will really act as a facilitator because I want to hear them um, and their perspectives on things, particularly the students. I think I think I, I really like to hear from them. So we've had a couple meetings. Thank you, Hannah, for coordinating. Um, we're we're finalizing the agenda, but I think we're going to land on something next week. But I just want to touch on a few things. So we have three topics that we're going to touch on. So topic number one after introductions is current events impacting the LGBTQ community nationwide, but also if there's anything that's happening locally, I'd like the, the folks to, in the Seattle area and also the Isco area to share that with us. I think it's important. Uh, like a really interesting topic in the past, this really resonated with me. Pride Month, businesses jumped on it and, and used it as a means of marketing, whether that be Target or Macy's or whomever. But this year, it's been challenging for them because of the backlash that's been going on. So they don't typically get the support that they usually do just because of what's going on in our nation. Um, 
and obviously the violence that's going on. Um, and just a little step to give you, at the start of 2023 legislation sessions, politicians across the country introduced 124 bills restricting LGBTQ at some level. Right. So if you try to operationalize that and how um, the youth live their day-to-day -day lives or same-sex couples like myself live day-to-day -day lives, you really have to take your perspective on what's going on and how it's impacting you locally and that's impacting you in your own household. So that's that's something we're gonna to touch on, hope that stimulates conversation. And then the pandemic, um, I think was a good topic on, did it, like, let's not limit this to LGBTQ. It's any any um, demographic that may have been impacted by what happened the past couple of years, good and bad, to surface that in the discussion. So I thought those were really good talking points and um, we're in the process of finalizing an agenda. These are really good topics, but again, it's just me facilitating and having them um, provide their their perspective on, on these um, things. So every year we, we seem to get better. Um, hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll get it'll some good dialogue. And then we also, to um, allow for input from attendees, we'll also have a um, poll. And I hope you can help with that. <laughs> you can just shoot out there because if you've ever participated in an online event, one way to garner the interest of the folks who are attending online is just ask them a question. It'll stimulate some good conversation and allow me to facilitate it better based on the percentages that we're getting from folks. So we're, we're looking forward to it. It's our way to, to celebrate public fairness. And I have to thank the mayor because she made she made like raising the flag front and center. She put them up center. So kudos to Mayor Collins and really acknowledging the importance of this month for, for our community. Questions on any of that from anyone? Good question, Greg. Right, right. Yeah. Um, you mentioned businesses. And I'm sorry, I came back in late. So yeah. um, it's maybe too late for this year, of course. But are you looking at certain businesses for next year? That's a really good question. I think I think they reacted to it. So let me let me just pull out one business as an example, which is Target. Mm -hmm. We have a Target here, mm -hmm. right? right. Mm -hmm. um, they had they used the opportunity for Pride Month, June, to put um, uh, things front and center, whether it be a rainbow flag or or just outerwear that you can wear. Mm -hmm. And then they had to yank that back a little bit because of some input they got from legislation. Right. I have to say it's not happening in Washington state, it's happening in other regions of the country, mm -hmm. but they've had to reassess their business strategies just because of what's happening in legislation. And um, so it's just one of those things that we have to acknowledge that it might not be happening to us here locally, but you think about the LGBTQ who's living in a different part of the country that no longer has access to those things that they may have had here before. Okay. Yeah. Well, forgive me for not mentioning this earlier, but um, my wife works for T-Mobile headquarters in Victoria, and they are really, really into social issues, social change, equity, and inclusion, and pride is a huge one for them. Um, I know that there's an, they always have leftover gear, like t-shirts and things like that every year. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be more than happy to connect you with my wife, who's has kind of the ear of a few VPs at T-Mobile, yeah. so that maybe if they want to maybe sponsor or get gear or something yeah. like that. I'm so sorry, Ray, I didn't think about this earlier. Oh, no, 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 no. This is just good conversation, good things to share. Um, we all may work for organizations that are sensitive to this topic, and um, I have one that I work for that I think it really has the ear of the LGBT community, but it depends on their business strategy and if it impacts them in a certain way, they might they might, they might might change things around. Um, and so we want people to be aware that businesses do do that. Mm -hmm. They put the needs of their, um, their uh, whether it be their employees or their population aside, just to grow their business model, and that's oftentimes not the best approach. Right. Exactly. That's sensitive to it. Yes. Thank you. And is there anything that I missed? And thank you always for facilitating our, our meetings and getting things together. Yeah. Um. I guess the only thing that was missed was, I mean, really, Ray deserves a huge shout out. He's done such a great job facilitating this. It's my 
And um, I think it's going to be a great event. I hope you all can join. Um, and then the other thing I'm just going to add, right, is that we're going to be pushing some promotion. Um, and so we're working with our communications team to um, provide like a flyer. I know it's on social media right now, um, but um, the only thing I can ask this group is to help kind of spread the word and um, invite people um, in your circles to, to join us virtually. I think it will be a great opportunity. Thank you, Anna. Uh, one piggyback item, one of the topics, and I didn't throw it out there, is what exists in most um, communities is this, this, I call it a generational disconnect. Mm -hmm. So depending on which era you were born in, whether it be your baby boomer, because you were born between 1946 and 1964, if you're a Gen X, you were born between 1965 and 1980, if you're a millennial, you're considered, you were born 1981 to 96. And that's, that's going to be an interesting conversation because some of us in the LGBT community, and I being one of them, you think everything's okay, but you ask a high schooler and things are not okay. Mm -hmm. So it's to hear even the, the disconnect within your own demography that, that you have to really mm -hmm. investigate and be sensitive about. You can't be relaxed about things because you think you're comfortable. Well, you have to listen to other voices that's right. in your own within your own democracy. Where every, every generation has different ideas and needs and wants yeah. and vision, right? Yeah. So like if our vision has been met, then we think everything's fine, but yeah. my vision is not your vision no. and so forth. Yeah. Right? And our children, and they might That's have right. a different perspective on what's going on. Just have to acknowledge that and talk about it. Yeah, that's great. So Ray and Hannah, thank you so much for organizing this. It's already on my calendar, so I'm going to uh, Zoom in or Teams in if that's what it is. And um, just let us know if there's any last minute help we need beyond pushing out the messages around it. Okay, so our next topic is Juneteenth again update. And Monica, did you have anything you want to say? Yeah, I think in a similar question, I just again wanted to thank so much the, the committee that worked on the Juneteenth event, from Lorna to Tony to Shay. Big, big thanks. Much, much appreciated. I know we had um, also uh, Lorna's coworker, um, Sharon, joined from the school district. We also had on standby and they were available, uh, our friends and partners from the Baha'is of Issaquah, they are ready to promote the event. Um, so, um, and of course, Hannah Roberts, again, our human services coordinator is, is doing a, a lot of prep in the background for sure. Um, so thank you, just wanted to say thank you. Yeah, to all of you. I know Tony has an update. All right, here's an update for everyone. Hannah, thank you so much for this. Is this update I'm about to give is like immensely appreciated by you, can coordinating everything and putting everything together. So thank you. Um, so over the course of the month, the equity board members have been really meeting together, as Monica said, to kind of plan out this Juneteenth event. It's one of those things that we've been doing. I think this will be our third. Is that right, Monica? Yes, yeah, this will be our third one. The first one was virtual. Last year was um, in person, and then this one will be in person as well. So we're really excited about this event. Um, so of course, what we want to do is have a celebration event. We want to celebrate the, the the beauty and the pageantry and the excellence of Juneteenth as an American holiday, right? So it's, it's not just about you know um, the, the the think about it from a um, I guess the standpoint of you know from a slavery aspect and how bad it was, but a celebration for all of us Americans to say, hey, we are now all free. Um, so each the members in this community that you know have developed this Juneteenth event, we also we noted that it's important to celebrate Juneteenth, like I actually said, but on the on June 19th, so actually on the actual day, and of course for it to be celebrated celebratory and to have red as a significant color. Um, to you know, celebrate Juneteenth, and of course that symbol symbolizes the bloodshed of enslaved Americans or of enslaved ancestors. But to also, like I said, we want it to be a celebration as well as a recognition. So there were many great ideas and connections in the community, and that included many things that are on the agenda. So while it's taken a while for us to solidify what we want to do for Juneteenth, uh, I think we're getting there, and so. 
we have confirmed some great representation for the event. So it includes a black owned food truck that will be servicing uh, smoke that will be serving smokehouse barbecue. And who doesn't love barbecue, right? Who doesn't love barbecue? Um, so Manny Brown from last year's Juneteenth event um, uh, and the current human services commissioner will be displaying his woodwork art pieces for the event. And students from Gibson Elk High School performances who are very excited and honored to be to be asked to participate in this year's city event. So once much like last year, the mayor will be giving opening remarks. So she'll be in attendance to give those opening remarks. And we're also looking forward to have the Northwest Tap Connections. Uh, Tap Connections is a race and social justice oriented studio connecting dance across communities. So this talented group not only performs, but also provides a cultural education, which I think is very important to our community. So we wanted the kind of theme of Juneteenth being celebration, education, and community all involved in into one event. So the group I'm talking about is led by Mrs. Melba, who is uh, Melba Crestfield, uh, just individual who's a former police officer and focuses heavily on cultural identity and connecting with people of color and their police force. She runs the Gulag Gichi Heritage Festival for the city of Seattle, and she is originally from Covington, Louisiana, and teaches on the Emancipation Pole. So they're, they're number one. This is a number one cultural uh, educators for biopic communities in the city of Seattle. So to say the least, we are thrilled to have this connection. And big thanks to Shay. Thank you, Shay. Um, she will be uh, this individual will be doing a storytelling about Juneteenth. <laughs> the Emancipation Pole demonstration and performance. So once again, as far as us in the Equity Board, I hope that all of us who are able to attend can actually attend uh, this event. But we wanted to make this a, a family friendly and lively event. You know, it was all about celebration, 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 and some education, of course, as well. So family friendly, lively, fun event. It's, there's gonna be some music and there's gonna be a playlist, a family reunion that will have popular barbecue sounds that many know and can dance to because yeah. all about celebrating right we want to dance want to have fun and so i love these community events like this because i think that they not only will give a i guess some, uh, maybe some community involvement with the equity board so they can learn more about who we are and what we do but for all of us to really embrace the community community embrace what we're doing and get to meet us as well um so at any rate um so there'll be free big red soda drinks, red tablecloths, and light activities for children like chalk and bubbles. We would, you know, family friendly event, celebrating, having fun, right? Yeah. All right. So now that the event and performances have been confirmed, our next focus is spreading the word about the event through social media, mm -hmm. flyers, more. So if you have any connections on Nextdoor, Facebook, at work, your friends and family, your coworkers, hey, Invite them. Invite them. You have a friend at your favorite grocery store? Invite them along. Say, hey, this is what's going on on June 19th. Um, so members from the Baha'i, as Monica said, have offered to pass off flyers at the market and to local businesses. So we hope you, everyone in the equity board, you and your families, if you can attend, that'd be great. Um, and if there's interest in more involvement, please contact myself, Monica, Shay, Lauren. We'd love to help you. Uh, be involved in any way, shape, or form. So I want to give you a little bit of a preview about um, who's going to be involved in the performances. I mentioned the choir, so Shay's, Ch Shay's Church, uh, or there might be a connection, or if there is a connection I have with the Seattle Choir, that may be a possibility where what I would personally like to see is a lot of people don't know about what we, what we in the Black community call the Negro National Anthem. And it was a national anthem that was created because we didn't have a citizenry. We, we needed a national anthem. So it's called Lift Every Voice and Sing. And it's beautiful words that I think everyone needs to hear mm -hmm. and understand because I, I would love to see us as an American society, sorry, United States society, to understand where we come from, where we need to go. And what that song is all about, and why it has to why it has to exist. Um, but anyway, uh, I talked about the Gibson Eck High School students, uh, the Northwest Tap Connection. I talked about that. So 
talked about Manny Brown, chalk bubbles, and for kids, big soda drinks. So we've got a pretty packed agenda, and I will be emceeing that as well. But I would love, love, love to have um, to see all of you there. Absolutely, sure. And Any Charlie, it's up there, right? Yes. Yeah. In the lawn. Yep. Weather permitting. If something happens with the the weather, we will move inside. So mm -hmm. we have both the the lawn and the community center. And what time of the day? Five to seven. So at 2.30, we're planning to, this is a draft right now, at 2.30 to 4.30, we're planning for setup. So even if you want to help set up, that would be fantastic. If you want to help set up, anything that you can do. I don't think we were able to get any kids to organize performances and such, because finals week is next week, and uh, all, everyone is very, very stressed out with that. However, I do see kids showing up on the 20th so to celebrate, as they did four years ago when we had it. Um, at the community center and probably help also. Mm. So I think it was just the timing yeah. and planning right now because a lot of the kids in the care club are now seniors, the ones mm. who are the most active. And so it makes it a little bit difficult. Yeah, the Gibson X students are. I know, so I'm so excited. So yeah. Questions? Comments? Yes. Connie, what we see you doing? I was going to say, Email me a flyer. Hopefully, it's a postcard that we can print, and then we can just clip and put on our social uh, calendar. Yeah, but you know, I don't want to have to make my own flyer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had a question about that. Um, so, do you have already preset uh, social media? You know how you can create the little. I'm not sure if the the ones that are designed. Oh, no, no, not no. the QRs, but you know how like it, it's already preset right. to go for Instagram or to be for the, Facebook. The, like, yeah, 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 like yeah. are those canvas already made? I don't know. So the community, uh, the communications team is working on it now, or they have finalized it. Hannah, do you have update on that? Um, yeah. So their uh, communications team is really working. Again, we this has been. Um, We've been it's just taken a while, so we finally have really finalized this event um, pretty much yesterday or today. Um, and so communication does have all the final information um, and then between now and next week, they should be giving us a flyer. Unfortunately, with their timing, they have some staff out this week, so it's looking like next week I'll be able to pass out the flyer. So no communication yet. You could probably have not seen it advertised yet because again, just as of yesterday, we finalized actually today we have finalized uh promotional um information about the event so i do appreciate your patience obviously not ideal but again we're just excited that it's coming together um and that we're going to be able to offer this to the community um so again we will it won't be as much time to um, push and promote um uh, but i think you know with every everybody's hands in this and flyers being passed out i think we can still make a great impact and get a good turnout so is it is it acceptable for us to make our own Canva and send out to yeah. our so no, what not can send like us. individuals like me private citizen mm -hmm. not me yeah if you would like to do that, that something along like just putting it on the calendar you can absolutely do that if not what's existing and it is available online it's on the Juneteenth web page and I'm happy to follow the up link. with an email there is like we have the Juneteenth page and there uh, is a quite inclusive created mm -hmm. and then the event it's um uh, it's noted uh, it's a celebrate Juneteenth it just doesn't have all the details that Tony covered yet but it's there and I'm, I'm gonna uh, email you a link to that okay and then I had um a question or I don't know a comment um on the page that is sponsored by the city of Issaquah for Juneteenth um there is a, a very good explanation as to what juneteenth is for for the general population um but i would like to see and or recommend and you all decide what you want to do with this that instead of um referring to people as slaves that we t refer to people as enslaved people um no, because we'll be saying that yes but the website says slaves is what I'm pointing out, and I would like that changed if you all feel like that's an appropriate change. Yes. Thank you for that. Definitely want to go through and change that. And is there uh, the same materials 
for Juneteenth for the LGBTQ event because mm -hmm. I will I will post I'm pretty big now. Yes. And I can make sure my post, if I some yes. people cheat, so I want to be wrong. <laughs> I'll jump in here um, again. Um, we do not have our communications team. We do not have flyers yet for both events. We don't quite have those the um, like Instagram Canva pictures that you are all talking about for both events, but they are currently being worked on. And again, the timing it, with some of them out, um, I, I think early next week, hopefully Monday, I'll have flyers and stuff. So hang tight, um, but I'll have it all ready for next week for all of us to push out and, and send and um, we can all streamline that. Can I, if I may jump in, all of you? Yes, there isn't. And my battery just died. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's what I was going to say. The information, and I just noticed the communications team just updated that information, and the information is online. You just don't see like pictures and whatnot. So there might be a chance that even it's, it's virtually. <coughs> I'll follow up after, or you can share your screen if you are connected. I'm not. I'm not on Teams. Yeah. So, okay. No, I didn't try to do that. Okay. So we'll send out links soon. Yeah. Quick question. Um, for Ray's event and for the Juneteenth event, shouldn't say Ray's event, for the LGBTQ Pride Month event and Juneteenth, um, is it cascaded through city employees encouraging their attendance? Um, typically, we can not. put, yes, we, we ask our human resources director to put the information to the um, internal newsletter, we call it the Quantico, that goes out to city employees. Okay. Yes, so typically we ask to do that, to, to have that done, and so that can be sent to employees. Mm -hmm. just, just a comment, um, if we think about where we were last year and where we are this year for preparing for these June events, it's been quite a great progress so uh, we have to give ourselves a pat on the back and to where we landed this year we we improve every year it's just going to get better for, for a new, new team so i'd also like to comment that juneteenth was the first time i ever met the two of you in real life that's right oh, and it was it? oh yeah yes, it was that's right. very exciting and so what we did from last year juneteenth to this year's juneteenth i'm very excited for it yeah, and yeah. the continuation of our work and celebration of what we do and what the community has been working on in general. I agree, Lorna. It feels more like a, a true festival, right? Like it the does. size of it, yeah. And I think when we were all talking and planning for it, that's what we wanted. We wanted a celebration, like something really coming together and celebrate right. what this is. Right. And then um, just to point out something, you all recall, I've been uh, harping on about having to select the language bubble, not be at the bottom of the page, but be at the top. It has been done. Yeah. So now people, when they visit the page, they can translate it immediately as opposed to just logging off. So thank you to the city for that, Monica. Yes, thank you. And you're very welcome. And please keep the comments and the input and the suggestions coming. Because again, I think from as a city employee, I know that we are committed to try to implement everything that it's possible. So I'm back online with my battery, and I would love a minute to just share the screen to at least show you a visual of what's available currently. And mm -hmm. as Hannah said, I know our communication team is working um, as fast as they can to, to give us all the other information. As you met them though, we have a team of two and they are serving the entire city department. And even just today, they had three meetings with three different requests from us. So I don't know how they keep up. And if every department in the city asks uh, the communications team to do just half of what we do, I don't know how they do it. But um, so the, the city web page or the city's web page has this inclusive Issaquah uh, page. Mm -hmm. And on the left hand side, we have um, the, the main uh, events that and we have a web page for each of them. So this is the one for June team. And I would like to also highlight because I also know Lindsay was here online from the Issaquah Highlands. Uh, the Issaquah Highlands is putting a, uh, on a global grub and groom June team on um, June 16th, so that's there. Then our event is here, um, where you can just uh, access the link, and it's on the city's calendar at this point, where I see that the communications team did update with the most recent information from today. 
uh, that you just shared. So that's what's available at this point, right? Um, and so we can share, I'm sure that they are going to work on the social media aspect as soon as possible. Uh, and so we can share that with the rest of you as well. Um, and then the same for Pride Month. We have the information here. Again, so typically we try to organize the web page where we um, provide some information about what the event or the month is, right? Any proclamations that uh, the city does, local events, and then regional events, and then resources at the bottom. So again, you'll find information about the garages event here and then our event here as well. So for now, you could share that information, as you said, if you would like to create your own and share, you, you have the information that you can copy in and, and share it with others. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Going back to Jim, something that I saw. I look at it today, but and uh, so definitely, and, and I know Hannah's probably taking notes already for us to change the language from slaves to enslaved people, which is a very, very good feedback. Thank Can you go up in your group? Yeah. I, we can take this offline, but it's actually an ad that I would actually like to put in there, um, which is that although when Juneteenth occurred, that enslaved were still not. not I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, much like then, as to now, there's still work to do, such as, you know, um, the enslaved were set free on this day, but still were not made American citizens until 10 years later. So right. much right. like today, there's still more work to do. Mm -hmm. and we still want to celebrate that achievement, but we still have yeah. to keep going. So something to that effect. I'm just not sure what the right language should be. Please, yes, please, as you think about it, if you have please send it our way. Okay. That's great. Yeah, we would love to change that. Yeah. We would like to make it very important often. And then Monica, I'll just add if you refresh your page, um, it should be up to it, um, at least on my end, I've changed uh, the wording. So thank you for the recommendation. And just like uh, Monica said, I, yeah, please, 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 please feel, feel free to provide um, edits or recommendations. Or if you see any other events that are not included on the website, um, we, we want to. And I'd be a good point of contact um, to make those updates. Communication is great, but that's something that I can help as well. So. Hopefully it's refreshing on your end, but we'll keep an eye on it and make sure that that's updated on our website. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you we couldn't put this together, Anna, without you and Monica. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah. This took a major team to accomplish, and yeah. I'm excited for how you described it. Tony makes it super excited. Yeah, team. So I want to do a quick time check because I know we've got one more kind of substantial agenda item that is estimated to take about 15 minutes of the staff report around our upcoming meetings. So are folks able to stay with me until that 8.15 and we could try to power through that? We can do that yeah. or if, if you cannot, the option is to postpone the agenda item for next month. Yeah. Can we get a thumbs up for 8.15? Okay, how about, so Shay, Christina, and Yima, are you? Okay, cool. Okay, we'll try to get through the other two pretty efficiently then. Um, so, Monica, would you like to kick off the work plan item on reporting bias? Yes, I would love to if I can switch to back to some of the pages that I have. Okay, so equity board members, as you may recall, at the beginning of the year, we all worked together and from um, a rather longer list of items that were all equity related and important to this board based on input that we heard from the community members, we prioritized and we chose four to focus on this year, um, again, based on 
not that one was more important than the other, but just based on timing, knowing that we were busy with other things as well. So the four items identified by the board, uh, board for our work plan was one, exploring bias and privilege to, through data in city departments. And that's a longer term goal was specifically focused this year on working with the police department on the data that they gather. Uh, the second item was exploring bias and privilege in business customer service. Um, and so that work would be um, in, in collaboration with our economic development uh, department as they are working with the businesses closely. The third uh, item identified was reporting bias in general. Um, and so from the community and doing the research on what's available, what should we do? And the fourth item was community conversations, cultural conversations. I know Ray has been working, for example, for Pride Month, right? So today, we, um, Priti and I want to provide you uh, an update on where we are with the work on reporting bias. We started on that. We created a subcommittee a few months ago when I reached out to all of you and said, who's available to what? Please sign up. Priti and Elisa at that time were interested in reporting bias, so we created a a small subcommittee and we started working on that and I want to um, give a big, big gratitude and shout out for the work that Alyssa put in into uh, into this. A lot of research, a lot of time and effort. Uh, I know she's no longer on the board, but I just want to acknowledge and thank her a lot of work that, that she put into this. Um, so for, for this item, reporting bias, the identified goal that we all uh, had a few months ago uh, was to review the current systems in place for reporting hate and bias and identify mechanisms for how residents can best do that, report any incidents of hate and bias that they experience um, and how can they reach out to you at the board, right? And so we wanted to evaluate options for next steps uh, once incidents are reported and then we can make recommendations to the mayor's office as applicable. Um, and so um, with that, uh, we estimated at that time that, that it will take about four months to, to work on this. I think from now, as we learned, it's going to take a little bit longer. But uh, I'm going to hand it over to Preeti to provide an update on what we did and where we are at this point. Yes, and I, I want to reiterate, Elisa did so much of the work on this. And so we don't have a proposal document quite ready for you all yet, but um, we've been working through kind of how do we define racial bias uh, how do we describe the need? And so that's some of the, the context these days around how there's been more, like anecdotally, I would say we, we know that there's more incidents of hate happening. I think there's some national level organizations that are collecting this data and showing an increase. And so uh, part of what's motiv motivating this is understanding to what extent are people experiencing that in Issaquah. And so uh, we did some uh, research to figure out, so how, how incidences of hate and bias are tracked nationally, who's doing that kind of work locally, like or, uh, community based organizations or local cities, county, and um, kind of figuring out what that means for Issaquah. So we know that there are, you know, some cities do some sort of tracking, but it's usually through the police department. And so when issues like that get reported, they're of a certain severity or intensity. Yeah. yeah. And so there's probably lower level things that do not get reported to the police. And how do we understand that? There's, um, for example, the county has a committee on hate or against hate and bias that has a data reporting mechanism through a variety of local community-based organizations. So they have a centralized survey intake process. And so folks can call up a community organization that they feel most comfortable with to report it. The organization can give them some, some advice on how to handle it, recommendations, and then it goes into some sort of you know, data system. Yeah, I have asked for a report. They have not published any reports on their data to date. Um, and so, Interesting. It would take them a while to produce a report that they could publish and share publicly. So that's one of the things. So we don't know exactly what the best approach is to understand. So and then so part of what we're trying to do now is like figure out what is the best recommendation or the path forward, given that there's not a great data collection system that exists. 
if we started to collect data, it could create the demand for responding, yeah. you know, to incidences. And so kind of thinking through that. So that's kind of where we're uh, not ready to have any recommendations yet. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, with, with that in addition, so we have some information where, uh, again, Elisa did a, an outstanding job in looking at exactly what's available out there and identifying the pros and cons about each of the systems. We did not identify a, a, a perfect solution yet. And so I think especially we, we had some discussions on, OK, do we want to have something specific only for Issaquah or does it make more sense to um, to join uh, with, with the regional entity such as the county so then there's information more available regionally and see how where is the fits in. But as we are waiting for the report and trying to see, okay, is that a good recommendation that we want to bring to the board? Um, also, there are lots of national uh, entities and organizations and so it's hard to know is the reporting that has been done into one place, has that been done into a different place? Does it make sense for us to create something new where it's like, so it's, it's a little bit of that where we feel like we need a little bit more time to wait and see and do a little bit more research before coming with a recommendation to you as a board to discuss that then you can also take further and then make a recommendation to the mayor. Um, so in, questions and in the but, research yes. that you, all have been doing. Um, have you discussed how people will know that there is this avenue to report outside of like the police force? So we we haven't looked into how uh, the data collection process is advertised. Mm -hmm. You know, so for some of the national systems or anything. Okay. So. That would be some of the, the future work to do, probably tied to a recommendation. Sounds great. Because, and to your point, right, it seems like there, there would be like almost three different elements. One, how do you promote, like, want to have whatever mechanisms in place, right? How do you promote that mechanism? And then, what do you do once you have the reporting, right? Because once you have uh, a report, then, as, as Priti said, you also need some way some sort of mechanism to respond and follow up um, and, and or minimally I think to make that upfront known what people can expect right like right. if I come forward this has happened to me what can I expect with that information are you just gathering information for future mm -hmm. use of it or are you actually going to help me with something, something right and I think that people would appreciate just knowing where we are in that process of collecting information right Maybe I maybe I misunderstood, Preeti. Um, but is some of that information gained from the state human rights um, uh, commission? You know that. So Lisa did most of this. So let me see. Don't be surprised. They've been an organization for a long time. I mean, why don't they have I see data and reporting? Yeah, she's got some national resources, and then it goes down to local is like city, school district. But not state. No, inter uh, the, the Sports Association, you did. I wonder if the Human Rights Commission actually, the state the Human Rights Commission, I wonder if they do have. Um, we need to make a note of that so we can mm -hmm. look at that. That would be interesting. Yeah, it'd be interesting to look at mm -hmm. it. It seems like it's a gap if they don't. Yeah. And it is based on, the bias is based on um, not just racial, but also sexual orientation and. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um, just real quick. Um, I remember when you all sent out the survey to us to prioritize. One of the suggestions that I made, because mine, had, if you recall, mine had like a whole bunch of. It wasn't just <laughs> check the box. Mine was like a, a narrative. But one of the 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 recommendations I made on there was the importance of of using either funds or the people who do um, uh, what do you call that mediation, like when there's conflict mediation, possibly tapping into that, you know, because I, I was envisioning, you know, like neighbors or people within a community that are having th this level of conflict um, to answer the question of like, what do you what can you do? Right. And then the other thing that I wrote was um, the possibility of creating, finding the funds, whether it's federal, state, or otherwise, 
to provide the community with an ombuds person so that people have you know a clear understanding that something will be done and i don't know how much money that would entail or where it would come from but those are the two things that i remember writing um, for us to consider and adding those steps into the, the recommendation section for us to think about. Thank you. Thank you, Pretty. Okay, any last comments or thoughts before we move to our final agenda topic? So we'll be back with more once we do a little bit more uh, research. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to try to be next a little bit with. Um, uh, staff report just wanted to draw your attention to the schedule that it's included in your agenda packet and I wanted to um, remind you that next meeting is scheduled for July 5th. We understand that it's right after July 4th so please do let uh, let me know if that date does not work for you. I want to ensure that we have quorum and I don't want to be here with three members and we cannot meet. That would not be fair to any of those of you who show up. But um, also next uh, next month um, is uh, scheduled to be a joint meeting with the Economic Vitality Commission. So tentatively, we are going to be planning hopefully to be able to meet again in the council chambers, just as you met in March with the Human Services Commission. Um, they're excited to share their work around the uh, economic development um, strategic plan that they are working on. And so opportunities for us to collaborate uh, around that. Um, and I know that we have a couple of other agenda items that are just our own, one of them being a follow up from today's public comment. Um, and I believe there was something else, but right now I don't have it in mind. Since and it's a joint meeting, does that mean it's not going to be an option to be virtual? Uh, no, there will be an option to be virtual, just like we had uh, in March. Oh, I couldn't come to I'm so sorry. Answer. Yes, we had both virtual and in person. Um, so, yes, great, great comment for that. Uh, thank you. And then uh, just so, you could, so I know if the topic is around the economic development plan, I, I found it really helpful to get prep materials mm -hmm. to like review because it's like a different yes. topic area. Right. So if there's anything like that, you could yeah. um, support. Yes, we will certainly have those published in the just like in mm -hmm. the agenda packet in advance. Um, I think we also, as I was talking with the economic development manager in trying to prep for the meeting, we are going to try to have a similar format, um, not quite as similar as we had with the Human Services Commission, but a little bit of like it's going to be a lot of reporting out to to share, giving you the background of what economic development does and, and all of that, especially I thought it would be helpful because I did hear um, multiple times from you as board members interest in connecting with businesses and interest with in, in that aspect. So I think them being the department and the board to do that, I think there's an opportunity to kind of like share and learn a little bit about one another. So mm -hmm. naturally we're going to try to build that in. Okay. Um, so that's that. Um, other staff report updates, just tying in a little bit. Um, I was, uh, you saw Hannah uh, Roberts was uh, online earlier, um, and I'm grateful. I, I put her in for some support with the event as I was trying uh, to work full speed on uh, some uh, pretty large programmatic aspects for the human services division. I'm excited to report that the emergency housing um, program is set to launch in a few weeks. We have staff who are set to, to start on June 20th. We have we are working to the lease was just adopted by City Council on Monday. Uh, so that's set to start July 1st. So we hope to have the first folks involved by July 15th. So a lot of work that's that I'm trying to get done on, on that. And also another exciting news on Monday, uh, City Council approved um, it's also equity related, but um, approved two additional behavioral health coordinator positions to form a core responder uh, program with the police department. So to always have a behavioral health specialist respond with uh, with a police uh, officer for any 911 crisis related incidents that uh, may involve a behavioral health. So um, I'm grateful for all the work that uh, uh, everybody's putting into the events and uh, my staff so I can focus a little bit on those types of things, but I wanted to share them. Just a quick question because I was going to ask before you said that and it's tied to that. So is there an interpreter or language line? Did we able to confirm if the police department and fire department are using language line services as they are in real time interacting with someone 
who doesn't speak the language. So I cannot speak of what's being used, but I know that the entire city has a contract with language line. So each staff, whether it's police or non-police, has the language line. We all should have access to language line if needed to just call. There's an extension that we need to call to provide that interpreting services. And I know actually the police department was set up before the entire uh, city was set up. What I cannot tell you, so I don't know how often or how easy, easier, easy, easily it's being used. Um, but I, I know we will have um, police department uh, guests come back in the next couple of months. So I think that's going to be a good opportunity to connect with them. As you heard, they want to come to you about the body cams conversation. Um, so I think the earlier that we are able to fit them in is for the meeting in September. Um, and also I wanted to follow up with the other work plan items uh, that we did not touch on yet. Just letting you know that I'm working on some things in the background, but if anyone's interested in, in uh, joining me, please do so. I invited Dale, who we met in person today. She's our city data guru uh, to come for a presentation and share what data is available at the city, what we are tracking, what we are not tracking, what are the hopes for the future. Mm. And also I invited Ryan Smith, who's the a police department crime data analyst who also handles data for the police department to come and share again just to start that conversation and say this is what we are tracking this is what we don't have and this is you know to for you to be able to have that connection and have access to that information uh, again both of those i think are scheduled to come august or september i think for august we are already have the comprehensive plan scheduled to return to you um so i think it's going to be september the earliest but that's where we are now. And, and Monica, can you clarify, like, if if people feel that it, there should be an interpreter, like that, that should be policy, especially when interacting um, with, um, you know, I don't know, the police or the fire department, whatever it may be. How does that become policy? Like, what would we need to send to you? You know, how does it become? so that you can answer that in, in an affirmative way. But you can answer that using data of how much is being used, because that's how we in the district analyze how the language line is being used by our um, monthly bills. And to see if, because in the beginning, we no one was using it, and then right. we can see. So you can kind of track usage mm -hmm. and what the goal is and how it's changed over time. Right, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that I would like for it to be considered as policy, right? Yes, so as right. opposed to like it being, you know, just right. it's there, but I'm choosing not to because, you know, right. well, for whatever reason, but rather... I'm required to use a translator if the people I'm interacting with need it. Mm -hmm. I, I see the difference, and I think that there are two two separate mm -hmm. questions, but right. both very good, right? One, is there a policy in place to use? So we hear there is, the system is available, but the question is, is there a policy in place that asks staff uh, to, to use language line? And second, is there data available where we track um, how, often? how often we use the language line. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay, I can return to you with both of these questions. Thank okay. you, Monica. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Any last comments or go to the order comments before we adjourn? All right, well, thank you all for spending the two hours and 17 minutes uh, <laughs> meeting. And I adjourn the meeting at 8.17. Thank you all.